Hello, my name is Christian Lee here for Air and Visual. We're here with Kaylee Morg. And how are you doing, Kaylee? Pretty good. I'm a little nervous. First day of tour. Yeah, first day of tour. <laughs> yeah, sorry, it's raining and very cold today. I don't know. I like the rain, but it is, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot happening. <laughs> Oh, you like to Okay, because you're originally from, I guess, yeah, because you were originally from Phoenix, and mm -hmm. it's like always sunny there. Kind always of, actually. Dry. I think people don't know that there's thunderstorms over there. Because oh, really? since I've lived in LA, there's actually not as intense of storms. So, like, you would think it's always sunny and hot in Phoenix, but sometimes we get these intense storms, and then when I come here, there's like nothing happening out here. So. Yeah, until this year. <laughs> yeah, 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 now it's like there's everything's flooding and my ceiling caved in, but we can talk about that. Oh, okay. yeah, we'll talk about <laughs> Just like a lot of stuff. All right, but let's get right into it, though, because I noticed you posted some stuff on Instagram already, you know, just your merch and everything. Yeah. And I noticed you have a tote bag for Good Day to Be My Dealer, but yeah. then I noticed on the set list, it's not on there. It is on the set it list. It is on there? So I, I basically, like, shorten all the songs because some of the songs have, like, four or five word titles, so I'm like, I'm not going to look at that and confuse myself with what song that is. So if you go to second to the last, or second to last song, yeah, it's Dealer. Oh, but I've had okay. multiple fans be like, "Where is this song?" Oh, okay, like, I, see, I see. Babe, I just shortened it. Yeah, I just yeah. Want to, like, no, that's smart. That's smart. That's smart. I'm so embarrassed now. I'm <laughs> All right, Brandon, cut that out. <laughs> no I'm joking, it's okay. But let's talk about you know some of the new stuff. You're on tour, and I think you was the last time you were here like 2018 because I actually yes remember I saw you open up for Poppy. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah, that was in uh, that was in LA, I think. So uh, the last time I was in San Diego was like. 2019 because I did a tour after that. Oh, okay. But that was like, that was a long time ago. So, you know, luckily you'll see me now because that was not my best performance. <laughs> <laughs> but how was the tour for that though? It was cool. I didn't, the Poppy thing actually got canceled because uh, she was releasing an album that got pushed back. So I was supposed to open for her. I only did like two shows. Oh, okay. Two shows. So I ended up touring with Pale Waves, which was really cool. But oh, that was the was. last, that was the last full American tour I've done. And that was in 2019. So this is going to be like my first time back in what what's that three or four years? Yeah. So kind of that's why it's kind of I'm a little nervous. <coughs> it's a lot. Yeah. We'll be back in better now. Mm -hmm. And then I did notice you. Well, me and the camera person were talking about this before we came here. That you know he saw the new Scream movie, mm -hmm. and then you do have a song there with Mike Shinoda. Mm -hmm. And how did that collab happen? Um, me and Mike have kind of known each other. We met briefly because he kind of reaches out and kind of asks his fans to send him like suggestions of new up and coming artists and I think I I'm guessing that's how he found me, which is really cool anyways, that he's like doing that and kind of trying to find new artists that people are vibing with. But so we met briefly from that and then I had put out a song that was completely inspired by horror movies. And so about six months later he texted me like, Hey like I have this song and I need a female vocalist for it. Um and it's for Scream. And obviously I was like dying and I told my manager right away <laughs> but then like to him I was like yeah sure whatever like that's yeah cool and so I went to his house and we did all this stuff and I really like I genuinely didn't think it was going to be in the movie and it's so weird that now when you see Scream like my voice is the voice over the title sequence yeah it's crazy so it went from like me being like yeah cool like let me try to sing on this to two weeks later we find out it's going to be in the opening credits of probably the best movie to ever be in the opening credits of <laughs> so it's like just a very insane moment it is a bop it is a bop it is a bop hopefully you could have a song in one of like the halloween movies like the you know actual oh my god i would die yeah yeah the halloween is so it's a, definitely like scream and then halloween they're kind of like both up there for me mm -hmm. so that would be maybe i'll be become like the jenna ortega of <laughs> music <laughs> i'll be like use me for your horror movies yeah, that, 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 that would be something, wow, yeah. That would be Because I know, I think Halloween is your favorite holiday, right? It is, well, yeah. I mean, naturally. But, yeah, so I would have to, I kind of, I wouldn't mind being, like, thrown into that space just because even in the beginning of my career, I think I was branded to other people as, like, a dark pop artist. So it's kind of always been embedded in my music, so it just kind of makes sense to be, like, a smooth transition into doing stuff like that anyways. So... Okay, let's talk about some other collabs you did too, because uh, you dropped your debut album last year, yes. Go Next Door, and I noticed you have one feature on there, who is actually a friend of mine, King Mala. Oh, really? You guys are friends? Yeah, I actually interviewed her on Sunday. Oh my god, I'm I'm actually bringing her out for the LA show. I was going to ask that, so well, I mean, cats out of the bag now. <laughs> yeah. No, but like we've never, which is actually going to be our first time performing that song, because that kind of happened really quickly too. Like we, a lot of collabs, you'd be surprised, like you're not actually in the studio with this person or it kind of happens in passing, mm -hmm. but I knew I wanted 
somebody that had that dark pop sound and also she just has this like different thing with her voice this different sound and tone to her voice than i do where she just has this like smooth jazzy kind of thing to yeah. it that i knew i wanted so um it was cool to like actually be in the studio with her and um run over like how do we want this song we, re we entirely rewrote that verse so it could be from the other perspective of the person in the song so it's just like an interesting collab because the song was originally like most likely going to be a solo track and then it turned into something with her so it was just really awesome and it's going to be really cool to perform with her. i know that, that's it i'm <laughs> so, excited i can't believe i did that that's cool <laughs> but also too uh i talked to her a little bit and she said that you're very into witchcraft not true. Yeah, I actually I haven't been recently. I don't sometimes like with witchcraft I am really drawn to it and then like I need a break or I just kind of mm, Yeah, I mean, you know, I think that regardless of like whether I'm practicing or not, it's always gonna be kind of part of my branding and my personality because it's such a huge it was such a huge part of my life in like mm -hmm. high school and after that it was just something that i like fully dove into so i don't know that i'll ever like not be connected with it in that way yeah so and you're also you know obviously you're connected to music too yeah and you've been doing music professionally for like i think like five plus years now yeah about five years now which is also insane to think about because i feel like i'm i came into the industry as a little baby when i was 19 and now i have this new way of looking at everything because I'm a little bit older so I just feel like I'm a lot more confident in who I am and um, I just think there's something to artists that have been around for a little bit it, like takes that long to have that artist mode or for me it did some people are just like out the gates a rock star yeah. but for me I feel like I'm actually just now coming into that artist headspace because I believe in myself that much I guess so it's just it's cool now I mean, I'm glad you gassed yourself up that's great. <laughs> but who are some artists that like influence your songwriting your sound who do you like listen to growing up over the years it's it's been different because i i kind of dabble in a lot of different sounds i when i first started it was very much like gwen stefani avril lavigne i grew up on alternative completely so when i first started i wasn't really referencing anything that i actually listened to because i okay. actually listened to like in high school my favorite bands were sublime red hot chili peppers the beatles like all that stuff so and my music sounded nothing like that so i was like cool this is just a separate thing that i couldn't really find the crossover of and then when I started going a little bit more alternative these bands that I loved when I was younger like Paramore um, and that type of stuff in Blink-182 like those were things that I finally started being able to incorporate into the music so around that time I started like listening to those people heavy and Third Eye Blind and um, just a lot of that stuff started bleeding into what I do and then now Oddly enough, um, I'm finding myself super inspired by like Bruce Springsteen, Queen, My Chemical Romance. It kind of just changes depending on sometimes the day. Like sometimes I'm just like, oh, I want to make an 80s synth track. Sometimes I want to make a weird anthemic Queen song. <laughs> so uh, it's, you know, I, I really don't have any limit to like what I'm wanting to do. I don't try to like box myself in. Okay, wow. <laughs> you know, throughout this, you know, before, you know, we did this and everything, you know, just based off social media day, I'm like, oh my gosh, she's like, so mysterious and everything. But you're actually very friendly. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm like, is that maybe that? It's like I hope that's a good thing. I, feel like good. I, I hope I'm not. I don't seem like mysterious and like a. She seems like she's maybe not that cool. <laughs> no, no, no. Because no, I'm just no, very. No. I'm very introverted, and I think it's. So oh, funny. really? It doesn't really. Well, I mean, well, when I have to do interviews, I have to do interviews. Dang, you really so like, I, I wanna, you like, put like, on. Okay. But yeah, when I first meet people, I always have a fear that I'm. I come off very standoffish because I. I'm very like wait to my turn to speak, and I don't like. Um, I just don't like like taking up a lot of space in the room, so it's it's weird with being an artist where like mm -hmm. I have to get on stage and have this persona, but as soon as I get off, I'm like, ooh, that was that was fun. Like, can I go home now? <laughs> so it's really like night and day when I'm off camera and I'm off stage. That's cool. That's cool. And I'm wondering too, you know, I, I you know, like I said, you're very friendly. So I'm wondering, do you think we could be friends? Yeah, I could be friends with anybody. I think. Hell yeah. <laughs> so. That's great. And the thing I like to do for my friends is give them gifts. So I have some gifts for you. That's my love language. <laughs> That's my love language too, actually. Oh, really? That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, first one, I got you this box of goldfish. Goldfish and colors, my... too. Oh, my God. Dude, the colors are the only way to go because do you think... I have a fight with people about this constantly. The purple ones taste different than the regular ones. Yeah. Have you noticed that? Yeah, yeah. I think, I think they're all a little bit flavored. A little as bit long as we're in agreement, then that's cool because the purple ones fucking slap. That's great. But that's not all. There's more. Okay. You didn't mention this artist, but I heard they did inspire your last album, and it's Alanis. <gasps> oh my god, dude, thank you. Yeah, no, I don't know what she is like. Actually, she was the biggest 
influence of Girl Next Door. So that's crazy. That's like, I should have said that, but thank you. Okay. <laughs> I actually don't have this. I remember. It's, it's classic. Funny. Cool. And let's, hopefully you don't have these too. And you did mention Blink and, you know, being in San Diego, I felt like I had to give you a Blink record. Yes, dude. Thank you. I actually like don't have many vinyl, period. So oh. like, this is like actually a lot of adding to your really awesome. Yes, dude. Such an iconic classics, classics. Yeah, What's my age again? Mm-hmm. And last but not least, I got you Fleetwood Mac <gasps> Rumors. And yes. it's the alternative albums that's your what? alternative artist. I actually don't think I've seen this one. Because I think there's the other version, right? Yeah, yeah. They have like some uh, alternate version of the songs, I think. That's so sick. Yeah. Thank you. Silver Springs, hell yeah. That's so cool. Because yeah. I know you said Steve makes a big influence on... Yeah, That's no, she is. The... It's definitely the witchy vibes. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. You're welcome. But I lied, there's actually one more gift. And oh my it's... god. You're spoiling me. Find it. Is it in here? I'm not starting to eat goldfish. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, you know what? I'm supposed to give you a Jack and Box gift card. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I felt like that would have been great on tour Dude. and I knew you used to work there, but. Oh my god, that would have been so I funny. Guess, yeah, but I also, have no like, clue where it went. To be fair, it's really hard for me to get anything there. So. Really? <laughs> well, not really. Like, I I do indulge, but it's. I have, like, horror stories and trauma. Oh, yeah, that's true, I guess. There. Like, I, I, that's fair. Yeah, it's not, not fond memories. <laughs> Alright, but now that we're friends and I gave you all these gifts. I have some more questions for you. Okay. And let's kick it up not kick it up a notch. And so, is it true when you came out, your family made you a cake? They did. Oh. I helped them make it though. Oh, so did I you? kinda lied a little bit. Because I helped them make it. I was like, oh I want a cake. And um they wanted to make me it like a normal cake and I was like, no, we need to make a rainbow cake. So we all made it together. But yeah, it was it was that was fun. It was a cute little day. They already knew, but <laughs> they were like, but now that you told us we'll make a cake. <laughs> That was nice. And I think you called it like a geek, right? Yeah, I called it a geek. And then I think it that it went like viral or something. And I was like, cool. I have little ideas. Cool ideas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and next one too. You talked about, I think, uh, re like right now, like the place you're staying at, there's like a leak or something with a roof and yes. everything. Yes. But also, is it true that at another place you used to live at, like it almost like burned down? I don't remember. Maybe it did. Or I've had so I think many. it was like during like the LA fires. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Wait, oh wait, that's like so random because I don't, I didn't even remember that. Yeah, I, I used to live in um, I used to live in Newhall, and there was like a fire that like, literally like two mountains completely lit on fire, and it was just like we lived right next to the freeway, and it was just on the other side of the freeway. That's crazy. So like we had to evacuate, but that's like I I forgot that. <laughs> like that's insane. Hey, your real friend never forgets, I guess. <laughs> And I do like your style too. Thank you. I was like, I wanted to wear something really cute, and then I was like, it's the first show, so I might as well be comfortable. So we're going, we're going cargos. Yeah, cargos is always the way to go. Mm -hmm. And I think your mom used to run like a blog too, right? Called uh, Sincerely Style. Ew, how do you know that? <laughs> Dude's all like Nardwar over here. Yeah, no, it's she. She actually ran a party planning business. That's like very strange yeah she it was called sincerely style and it was like catering party stuff and vlogging that's random <laughs> have you thought about getting to that you think you could cater a party you think you knew how to like uh, uh, i used to design? Hunger. oh yes. really okay yeah i used because my mom she did a lot of the stuff like with stuff we had and then we would like me and my sister would have to go over and like set up all because my dad used to be a chef so it was like a whole family thing we would all go and like set up tables and like do the catering and the decorations so it, we all did it together. So yes, I think I could do it, but not as well as my mom. My mom like hey, had fair it. enough, fair enough. She had a thing for it. <laughs> well, thanks for taking time to the interview. I've yeah, had fun. Thanks for having me. This and before we turn off the camera, though, you know, this interview is all about you. So Brandon's gonna put the camera just on you, and you get to plug whatever you want in your social media, tour dates, maybe if you have any Sweet. new songs coming out. I don't know. Okay. Nice time um, to see you. It's Morg Mommy on everything. Yes. Um, I'm sorry for the username. I, I want to change it, but I think it's just sticking at this point. Oh, it's pretty good. Um, <laughs> I'm touring with Maggie Lindemann right now, and I put out an album in October, and I have a new song with Mike Shinoda that's in Scream. So you should either stream it or go see it or both, which would be awesome. Thank you so much.